Listen to this proclamation from William Bradford, governor of the Plymouth Colony, which was written in 1623. Hear ye, hear ye, inasmuch as the great Father has given us this year an abundant harvest of Indian corn, wheat, beans, squash, and garden vegetables, and has made the forest abound with game and the sea with fish and clams. And inasmuch as he has protected us and spared us from pestilence and disease and has granted us freedom to worship God according to the dictates of our own conscience, now I, your magistrate, do proclaim that all ye pilgrims with all ye families do gather at the meeting house on the hill between the hours of 9 and 12 in the daytime on Thursday, November the 29th of the year of our Lord, 1623, and the third year since ye pilgrims landed on Pilgrim Rock, there to listen to ye, pastor, and render thanksgiving to ye, almighty God, for all his blessings. 397 years later, on Sunday, November 22nd of the year of our Lord, 2020, we pilgrims have gathered at this meeting house to listen to ye, pastor, and to render our thanksgiving to Almighty God for all God's blessings. Like those early pilgrims, when we stop to count our blessings, we immediately think to thank God for the abundance of our possessions, the food we eat, the clothes we wear, the houses we live in, and the obvious other gifts of good health, of family and friends who love us, and if we're fortunate, the blessing of fruitful work. Yet the Pilgrim's gratitude list didn't stop at corn and squash and the other meager provisions that they had thanks to the generosity of those Native Americans in whose land they had landed. The heart of their gratitude was directed towards God, who had delivered them from their religious persecution the God who had brought them safely to a land where they were free to worship according to the dictates of their own conscience. We all know that story of the first Thanksgiving, yet we also know that really wasn't the first Thanksgiving. The first feast of Thanksgiving happened 2,000 years before in the land of Canaan, when the Israelites entered the promised land after God delivered them from their oppression. Both stories remind us that thanksgiving begins with trouble, that gratitude is born from hardship. The people of God had wandered for 40 years in the wilderness. Finally, their journey ended and they were about to enter the promised land. And Moses brought them together and he told them to gather grains and fruit and to offer these harvest gifts to God in worship. And as they came and laid their gifts at the altar, God's people were to recount the struggles and the hardships that they and their ancestors had endured and to recount how God heard their cries, that God saw their misery, that God delivered them from their suffering. It was the remembering, the calling to mind God's faithfulness through all their hardships and suffering that created a well of gratitude within the people of God. Thanksgiving is about thinking carefully about what has happened to us in our lives, that we too might become aware of the gifts we've received 
from God during all our challenging times or in the midst of our own suffering. Gifts we might not readily see at first. Only when we are alert enough to ask, where might I be right now if God had not delivered me from that dilemma or guided me in that decision or led me out of that stressful situation. Only then do we become mindful of the ways in which God has brought us through to where we are now. And we notice how the hardship we experience brought into focus the real depth of our most meaningful relationships and those things which matter most in life. Thanksgiving arises not from what we have or where we are or from what we are doing. Thanksgiving arises from where God is and what God is doing. We tend to think that gratitude flows from our joy, but spiritually speaking, it's not joy that makes us grateful. It's gratitude that makes us joyful. As Paul wrote in the transitions and hardships of life, we are invited to be thankful in all circumstances, not for all circumstances, but in all circumstances. Being thankful in all circumstances, our view of those circumstances is changed so that we are transformed and our joy is unearthed. The spiritual discipline of giving thanks is to look deeper into the fabric of our lives and see blessings where we thought none could ever exist. For our ancient ancestors on that first Thanksgiving, the invitation didn't end there. Moses also told them to let the Levites and the foreigners who live among you join in the celebration. Not just the people of God, but the entire community is to experience the abundance of the land and the blessing of joy that comes from giving thanks. Why? Because communal gratitude creates deeper community. In addition to counting our blessings as individuals, we as a community are to look back on the ongoing gifts God has bestowed upon us throughout history, the gifts of creation, the gifts of our continual redemption into greater freedom, and the gift of faithful community. As we gather to express our collective gratitude for all God has done and is doing in the life of our world, we enjoy an even greater blessing, the blessing of being drawn together into something greater than our individual lives. We are drawn ever more deeply into being the beloved community of God. There are a couple of invitations for us from today's scripture readings as we celebrate Thanksgiving this week. One is to find reasons for gratitude from the hardship we have endured during these challenging times using the formula that Moses provided for us to prayerfully reflect and recount, I was. God heard my cries. God saw my misery. And then as we become aware of the gifts we received, then we're able to say, and I am thankful The second invitation is to do this in community with whomever we might be on Thursday. Many of us might have that same Thanksgiving dinner tradition of inviting everyone at the table to say something for which they are thankful. 
what if in addition to recounting our individual blessings, those gathered around us recounted what collective gifts we together as a family or as a group of friends or even as a couple received from God during these difficult times. Expressing our communal gratitude, we see the graces through which God is working to heal, to renew, to strengthen us as a family, a couple, a group of friends, or a community of faith. Gratitude is powerful. It detaches us from our misery. It changes our perspective. It transforms us and our circumstances, leading us to experience the fullness of joy that Christ came to bring us. For that, let us rejoice and be glad.